As we learn a little bit more about responsive design, there's a few things that we need to establish before we can get started. In this course, I'm going to be using HTML5 and CSS3 to create the various web pages that we'll be working on. In order to ensure that these web pages are going to work across the widest range of devices, there's a little bit of extra setup that we're going to need to do. So let's just talk about what our goals are and what those things are that we need to do before we can get started. In this course, we're going to be creating our responsive layouts from scratch. So we'll be actually working in code as we create the various web pages, CSS files, and other items that we might need for our final examples that we'll be using in this class. When you're using HTML5 syntax, you need to provide support for older browsers. By utilizing some JavaScript, and, and in some cases augmenting your CSS slightly to ensure fallback content for browsers that don't support some of the CSS3 functionality. You can safely use things like RGBA colors, text shadows, box shadows, media queries, and other items that are part of the CSS3 specification. We'll be looking at these as we progress through this course, but let's talk a little bit first about HTML5. The reasons that we want to use HTML5 is because it allows us to create a more semantically valid and correct web page. So prior to using HTML5, we did a lot of work with divs, and divs don't really mean anything to screen reader or a search engine or something that comes to your page and is essentially blind. They're not seeing the content on the page. So using semantically correct tags is going to make your web page much more meaningful. HTML5 elements have better semantic value. When the architects of HTML5 decided on what names to assign to new elements, they didn't just kind of create them out of the air they actually pulled professional designers and developers and they asked them and they pulled what class and what ID names did you use most often in your layouts. The most popular names were things like header, footer, nav, and so on and so forth. So that's essentially where the the tag names came from. If you want to get more information on HTML5 tags, you can go ahead and reference the developers.whatwig.org website. This has all kinds of information on HTML5. It's updated constantly. So for instance, if I wanted to find out more about the nav tag, I could go ahead and type nav in the search box. As I hit return, it'll give me all sorts of information. So if I want to learn more about the nav element, it lets me know what the nav element is about and you know you can read through this there's tons of information on this page but this is a great resource for you to reference this is developers.whatwig.org is the URL another benefit of using HTML5 tags is that your code is more organized so if I open someone else's web page and they've used HTML5, it's going to be much easier for me to actually read through the page and understand what's going on. Another benefit is accessibility. When you use HTML5 syntax, you're going to create a meaningful document outline. The document outline is going to prove the accessibility of your page, especially for screen readers. The use of HTML5 elements can also improve search engine optimization. Search engines like being able to categorize the content that's on the page in order to give it weight or preference, and the specificity of HTML5 tags are going to allow that to happen. We're going to be looking at this page, which we'll ultimately be building in this class. This is a responsive layout and if I resize the page you can see that the content is going to flow into a different formation so it goes from what in essence is a three column layout down to a two column layout and 
this is actually an alternate two column layout and finally it goes to a one column layout so all the contents here the navigation is moving to the bottom etc etc so we're going to go ahead and talk more about this page specifically a little bit later on here is just the base code for that particular page and this has been coded up using HTML5 so we'll just kind of look at some of these tags and go through this quickly. I'm declaring the doc type as just HTML which is what you need to do to in order to use HTML5 and then you can see that I start off by using a div right here. This div has a class of container. It is going to be the containing div. When you're using something that doesn't really affect the document outline, divs are still recommended. So we'll still use divs for things that aren't really outlining anything specifically on the page. The rest of the page though uses HTML5 tags. So here I have a header. The header contains a link and an image of the logo. Then I have a section. The first section that we have right here contains an article and this is just a couple of paragraphs that kind of describe what the website's about. Then I have another section called promo wrap which contains my promotional items. So this contains a series of articles that contain headlines, figure tags which contain images and then paragraphs of information and you can see that just kind of repeats itself as we go down the list. So if we jump back into our page, this right here is my header with the logo right here. Then I have the first section which is these two paragraphs and then I have this kind of promo wrap section which is these three columns of content and each of these columns of content are contained in their own article tag and then I have a footer tag down at the bottom which just pretty much has the copyright information and you can see that that resides within a footer tag and then here's my navigation. My navigation is located in the bottom of the page but you can see that when the page is in the browser at least at the large view the navigation appears at the top of the page. When my page is resized to be smaller the navigation eventually jumps down to the bottom of the page and we'll learn how to do this during this course but right now I just want to talk about the HTML5 tags. So this is a quick outline of my page. Uh, since this class is not an HTML5 class, I'm not going to get specifically into these things, but this is a very common way that you would create a website. It's common that you would have a nav tag and then create an, a list inside it, an unordered list, which contains your navigational elements. Article tags, like we're using throughout the page, are used to group content that in theory could stand alone. So all of these little bits of content that were are within article tags are things that could be repurposed or stand alone. The figure tag, for instance, is a tag that is used to identify graphical objects on the page, photographs, diagrams, illustrations, so on and so forth. Figure tags also can use fig caption tags which allow you to add a caption to your images which we're not using in this particular example but that is something common that you can do. So again the point of this is, is that this document is structured so that we can chunk it up for different devices and different screens but right now we're creating the purely structural content of the page and if you're curious this is what the page currently looks like. I don't have any styles associated with the page so this is just the straight HTML page and right now by itself this is a responsive website without any CSS HTML pages are responsive they work in wide screens they work in narrow screens obviously this is not as visually pleasing as what our final product is going to look like but in itself it is a responsive website I basically have some good news and some bad news in regards to HTML5 tags. The bad news is that 
most older browsers, they don't understand any of these new tags and they don't really know what to do with them. So if they use them, you're probably going to run into layout problems. The good news is that these problems are easily fixed. It's not that big of a deal. You can basically use HTML5 tags today with no problem. There's just a couple of so small things that you need to do. Older browsers like IE8 and IE7 even some of the features aren't so well supported in IE9, they don't recognize these new HTML5 elements. So it just treats it as if it's an unknown element. Most modern browsers are just going to go ahead and style those tags if you create CSS, but in the older browsers they tend to ignore it. Most browsers, when they see an unknown tag, they just treat it as an inline tag. So we are going to force the browsers to, first of all, recognize the new tags, and second of all, to be block level so that we can use them in the way that we wish. Internet Explorer versions 9 and below do not allow unknown elements to be styled. So we're going to use a little bit of JavaScript and force those older versions of IE to obey and do what we want them to do. For more modern browsers, we're just simply going to tell them that we want these new tags to be displayed as block level elements. But let's take care of the earlier versions of IE first. In order to take advantage of utilizing IE in our project, we're going to want to add some JavaScript. The JavaScript that we're going to be using is called the HTML5 shim or the HTML5 shiv. Essentially, it's the exact same thing. Some people call it a shiv, some people call it a shim. But what this does is it creates some JavaScript that will go inside of a conditional comment a uh, conditional comment is something that will only target something that meets that particular condition. And once we do that, the JavaScript is going to force these older versions of IE to render the HTML5 elements, and then we can use CSS in more traditional means to style them. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our web page. I've gone ahead and I've already downloaded the zipped files for the HTML5 shiv. You can find these files at code.google.com. Here is the link right here, code.google.com forward slash p forward slash HTML5 shim. You can also just Google HTML5 shiv or HTML5 shim if you want to get these files and I will provide them for you for in this course as well. I'm going to go back into my document and what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and add support for these older browsers. If we look on the HTML5 shiv website you can see that it says insert this little bit of code right here and we're just going to have to augment the link for the JavaScript file because I placed this inside of my JS folder. So I'm just going to copy this code and I'm going to go back into my code view. The conditional comment is going to go within the head tag. So here's the head tag right here. And I'm just going to place this underneath my title. I'm just going to paste this in. And you can see that it goes ahead and adds this HTML comment. Okay, so the condition is placed inside of a comment. What this is going to do is that if a modern browser comes along to our web page, it's simply going to treat this as a comment and ignore it. If IE comes, it reads this as a conditional comment and it basically what it says is it says if less than LT, less than IE9, then it's going to include this script and then we end the conditional comment. So all we need to do is just change the link to our script. My script file is simply in a folder called JS and then I'm going to go forward slash because the HTML5 shiv is located inside of this particular folder. When you download the HTML5 shiv file, 
you'll actually get two JavaScript files. You'll get the straight HTML5 shiv file and you'll get a minified version of that file. The minified version is simply a compressed version and it's slightly smaller. The uncompressed version is about 12 kilobytes and the minified version is 4 kilobytes. The difference in the two files is that one has line breaks and one is just all compressed. I'll show you real quickly. So here's the straight HTML5 shiv file right here and you can see that it has comments in it and it basically explains what this file is about. You don't even ever have to read this. You don't have to worry about it. I'm just pointing it out. And you can see that the file is fairly long because it has all these commenting, it has line breaks. It makes it easy for a person to actually go through and read this. The minified version of the file looks something like this. You can see that it's much shorter and everything, there's no comments aside from the very first licensing comment everything's been compressed down. This would be much harder to read if you understood JavaScript. So the minified version is just a smaller version. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be using the link to the minified version. So I'm just setting a script tag. I'm setting the source to reach this minified version of the JavaScript file. And that's all I need to do. This is going to ensure that if an older version of IE IE9 and lower comes to my web page, the support for the HTML5 is going to be there. That's something that you're going to want to include on all of your web pages if you're going to be using HTML5, not just building responsively, but just using HTML5. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to change how browsers see these HTML5 elements. As I mentioned before, when a browser comes to the page, older browsers anyways, unknown tags are going to be treated as inline. So we want to force them to be block level. Most modern browsers, you could basically include any tag that you wanted. I could make a tag that said a food tag or whatever and the browser would actually render the content within the food tag. It's not going to understand what the food tag is but it would render the content. It simply would just treat that information though as inline content. We're going to go ahead and we're going to augment our CSS file so that these things can be treated as block level elements and here is my CSS file right here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my CSS. The CSS that I'm going to use is simply going to identify all of the HTML5 tags that we might use. So here we have article, aside, some of these we're not using, but I'm just going to keep them in here anyways. Figure, footer, header, nav, section, and then audio, video, canvas, things like that. And I'm just telling them to display as block level. That's all I need to do. Once I do this, I'm going to force any browser that comes to my page to treat these HTML5 tags as block level tags. So we'll go ahead and we'll save our CSS file. And then I'm just simply going to link to my CSS file. So I'll go back to my HTML right here. And we're just going to create a link to our CSS. That's going to go inside of a link tag. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the rel to style sheet. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the href value and point to my style sheet. So my styles are inside of my CSS folder and the name of my file is just simply called style.css and this is a self-closing tag so I'll just close the tag like so. So this creates the link for my style sheet. If I save my page and we refresh it in the browser, nothing is really going to change because I'm previewing this in Chrome and Chrome is a modern browser that is going to treat the HTML5 elements as block level anyways. These things that I've done are going to ensure that my web page is going to work across the board in those older browsers. It doesn't have to be just a super modern browser.